Baboom! Name is Hades, Queen of the Underworld. Hi. How you doing? Which roughly translates as welcome or <laughs> welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is this is another one of my what if they were good series in which I've turned Hades from the Lord of the Undead to the Queen, darling, of the Underworld. I got my hair, I got my looks, kinda. I got my crown that I might have nicked from Ursula. Don't tell her, she's mean. Mm. So, uh, this this wig is shedding like nobody's business. Thank goodness I didn't pay an awful lot of money for it. However, it's a stunning shade of blue. So, if you want to find out exactly how I achieved this look, and how this series even came to be in the first place, then my friend, you are in precisely the right place. Zeus has got me a cup of coffee. I really need that right now. You need to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because let's face it, it's a small underworld after all. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I feel kind of ski whiffed. I don't know if it's my. Let's hope you knocked my thingy again. Yes, I think he has. Okay, I think we're about level. Well, that's about as level as it's getting tonight, put it that way. Oh, this is a good start, isn't it? Wiggling already. Let's try that again. Hi, welcome back from the intro. Oh, Lord, I'm a hot mess tonight. Right. This is another one of my What If They Were Good series that I'm doing for Halloween. And I know Hades technically is a boy, but what if he were a Disney princess? How would he look? So that's the look I'm going for today. Um, obviously, I am still a teaching channel, so I am still going to be going at a speed that beginners can keep up. That and the fact that my chronic pain is currently through the roof. I'm not going to be blending at the speed of light, like Zorro, or Speedy Gonzales, oh. um, I've genuinely lost the plot folks, basically if you're quicker than me at blending, there's a speed widget, please feel free to use it, I won't be offended, I won't even know unless you tell me, well, even then I won't be offended, I won't banish you to the underworld, <laughs> right, let's get you zoomed in a minute, because I do want to just talk through very quickly about eye shapes again. Now, I've got what's known, uh, I've got deep set eyes. I have heard them referred to recently as double lidded eyes. A lot of people with my eye shape mistakenly believe or mistakenly are told that they have hooded lids. Now, I'm going to talk you through how to work out whether you have hooded lids or deep set eyes. And then I'm going to give you a fix or a cheat for each eye look, each eye type, so you can follow any tutorial. My head's waggling around like something chronic and it's really distracting me in my viewfinder over there. <sighs> I feel like David Gray. There, another one. Right. Let's talk you through. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner so I haven't got hooded lids so only if your static lid completely covers your mobile lid right down to your lashes part or all of that lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye now this is the eye that I'm blind with so I'll demonstrate with this one if I cover my visible mobile lid relax your brows and there you go and then close my eye you can see I've got as much lid space again that tucks back away into that crease and if I roll it up, roll up, 
the brush handle. Oh yeah, I've lost the plot. And then cl <laughs> close the eye again. You can see I've got lid space there that tucks back away as well. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that gives me the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting the crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And when I'm wearing glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch right through here. Now, you can still follow any tutorial with this simple little trick. If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and sketch it out on your static lid where you need your new crease to fall. Now, obviously that's going to reduce the space between the new crease and the brow, so just use slightly smaller blending brushes than the person giving the tutorial. If you have deep set eyes like me, when you're blending a colour through your crease, stop, relax, look back and just make sure you brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. It's that simple. But, as you can tell, two very different ways of dealing with two very different eye looks. So, let's get round to putting some colour on it. Now, with Ursula, I did my face pearl pearl. Hades is grey, grey blue. I don't think a princess would be grey blue. So I'm going to try and recreate his skin tone and eyes into the eye look. So his eyes are yellow with a rim of red and then he has like a smoky grey black kind of smoky eye thing going on. So. I've grabbed my Anastasia Prism palette because, well, why not really? Because uh, it's got a very nice yellow, a very nice black, and a gold if I decide I want to go that way, and a shimmery, pewtery, bluey, grey kind of if I decide I want to go that way. And if I decide I want to put something that looks red-ish in, I'll have to pop this in as well. So, shall we begin? I think you're a little bit zoomed out. Let's zoom you just a fraction more. There we go. Right. So I'm going to start off with a big old floofy round brush. This is a Royal and Lang Nickel Chic Pro crease brush. And I'm kind of going to go a little bit in reverse. Because normally I do light to dark. I kind of want to do light to dark this time. But I have no idea how that's going to look. And like always, I haven't practiced this look. I just go straight in with it. Because, well, I'm a bit of a glutton for punishment, really. Face is wash, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. Although it is currently very late. And I'm going to be taking this back off again. So I'm not quite sure why I put the SPF on. But it's automatic. Um, eye primer is my usual Crow and Pebble. Love this. Discount code below. Non affiliated. Um, the reason I love that is because it goes on dry. It doesn't go on sticky. I literally just get a fluffy brush, rub it in there, blend it out across the lid. Doesn't need setting, which means you can go straight on with a colour and blend straight away. And I nearly went straight up the top with that then. Right, I'm going to try, sort of, I'm going to run this through the crease. And down onto the actual lid itself. I can't see a damn thing now. I'm very much relying on muscle memory. Hey, look at that. That's not bad. This is Sphere, by the way. I love this shade in this palette. I know a lot of people didn't get on with this palette, but I really like it. I did, um, I think my first retro review was with this palette. I'm really not worried about fallout because I shall do my base afterwards anyway. So, same thing this side, through the crease. And this is what I was saying, when you relax your brows you can see, I can't really see that above the crease. But that's fine because I think I am going to go in with that orangey shade next. To kind of ring the outer edge of the yellow of Hades eye. So I'm just really buffing that out and blending that out really nicely. 
across the lid. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to pop the gold on top. I'll see how it looks when I'm done. But yeah, this was one of those ideas that hit me at sort of stupid o'clock in the morning when I was awake with pain somnia. So, <laughs> you're welcome. Um, I've got a clean washcloth here. I'm just going to clean the brush off with. I might go with a slightly more tapered one for the next stage. I'm still using a Chic Pro from Warren Langnickel. This is their eyeshadow brush. It's, it's an oval so I can contain it more through the crease. And I'm going to go into satin, which is that sort of brick orange colour. And I'm going to run that along the edge of the yellow making sure I brought it up high enough to see above my crease, which I have, and then just buff and blend that out, and then bring a little bit of it in. This is what I was meaning about colour transfer, and you can see even with a matte shade I'm getting some transference there. So I'll right, we'll just bring the outer edge through a bit more. And that gives that kind of ring of deeper shadow that I wanted around the edge of it. Yeah, so it's like I've got, I've got a few Halloween looks on my channel. Last year I did the broken doll look. Um, audio is not great on that, I will admit. I have tweaked it as much as I can. Um, my audio is much better now than it was in the early days, but I'd only had the channel going for a little while, so... Because I actually, I started the channel in March, and although that was a Halloween look, it was actually recorded... No, I started the channel in February, and uh, that Halloween look, Broken Doll look, was actually recorded in March, so... It was still actually very early days for my channel. I was still learning settings and stuff on the camera and everything. When I'm blending, you can see I'm using circular movements this way towards the nose and the reverse direction coming back again. Because what that does is it very gently, I'm holding the brush right at the end to put as little pressure on as possible, but it very gently moves the skin of the eyelid around so you don't get any gapping or like tiger striped areas where you've not got any colour. Um, I do have an issue with this eye that I've got a super deep crease in here so which is why you saw me stretch that lid out. Um, but as you can see I didn't do it this side and I would advise you not to do it if you don't absolutely have to because otherwise you will give yourself super deep creases and you will never get rid of them. And I will only get worse, I promise you that. So there's our sort of orangey ready ring around the edge of our wonderful yellow eyes. Just clean this off on the washcloth. Grab a little bit of that sphere and just, just pop that back onto that is the only problem with this sphere, it does tend to get blended away, you do kind of have to... If it keeps going like that I might try applying it with a wet brush. But I think I'm done with the blending in that area now, so hopefully that should stay as is. Right. I might stick with this brush actually, it's just I've got a little bit more control. I'm going to go into Obsidian. Obsidian. Insidious. Yes, as I was saying, um, I've got my Broken Doll look that I did last year. And in July this year, I was in a collab where we decided to do Halloween in July and I did a, a zombie beauty guru punk 
because no, well, why not really? Basically, I was doing a punk zombie and then realised that the, uh, the blood that I usually use had dried up. So I thought, what am I going to put in the gaps on my face? And I decided glitter, so it turned into like a beauty guru zombie. As you do, you know. I'm just going to bring this black down now. I'm really putting very very little on the actual brush itself at the moment because I want to have control about how deep this eye look goes. I don't want that black to really overdraw. I still want to be able to see that little patch of orange through there which I am seeing which is great. And I've actually managed to leave a little bit of space. Normally if I'm working down to up. I normally end up going up so high that I don't leave any space for my highlight to show under my brow bone, but I've actually managed to get it about right today. Yay. Yeah, so both of those looks, the Broken Doll and um, the Zombie, were quite technical and although I you know, I walked you through it step by step. Not really very beginner friendly, if I'm if I'm totally honest. Um, I mean, you can follow it and you can do it as a beginner, but again, it's not the easiest of looks to do. So, a group that I was in called Nightmare on YouTube. <laughs> um, I decided to do the uh, scarecrow for that one. Scary scarecrow. Which was a shh. Busy. Um, you'd think that at 11 o'clock at night people would stop messaging me, wouldn't you? But, um, I'm so popular, you're in the middle of the night. I'm just sitting back and checking I've got similar shapes both sides now. You see I've come down a bit lower this side so I need to come a little bit lower this side. This is just what you see. We're not James Charles and we don't Photoshop our eye looks. Yeah, so I wanted to do a slightly more beginner friendly look in that collab. And I wanted to do some, some Halloween themed ones. But I thought if you've got kids parties to go to you know, you're not necessarily going to want to terrify the poor little buggers, are you? Well, depends on whether you like the kids or not, doesn't it, really? I'm going to give a few. Let's not go there, much. Um. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to take the colour off of this. And I'm just going to really, really lightly, with no colour on the brush at all, just buff the top edge of that black both sides just to soften it out a little bit. Yeah, so I wanted to do um, a look that was. I wanted to do some looks on here that were easy to follow, would be child friendly, and would be a little bit different. There's an awful lot of sort of Disney collab palettes coming out at the moment. I know Colourpop have just done another one. And uh, I always thought to myself, oh, I don't know, the, the villains palette always seems a lot more interesting than the princesses palette. And that got me thinking one night when I was awake, at four o'clock in the morning, with ridiculous amounts of pain. What if the villains are actually the good guys? Um, that's that's basically what started this whole thing on my channel. It could go well, it could go appallingly, I don't know. I haven't, obviously I'm, I'm recording these now and I'm editing them. I think, I think probably the first one will have gone up by the time I'm filming three and four. Because I'm going to try and get five videos up this week if I can. I think this one's going to be number two in the list. Just 
just going to go with my micellar water up here and just just make that a little bit a little bit cleaner on that top edge. That's better. Right. I'm going to pause you while I put some foundation on and do base products and brows and stuff. And I'll be back to finish this eye look off with you. You will see me instantly. I will see you the very next time I press the record button. Don't go anywhere. Hey, I'm back. I went for quite strong brows because, well, Hades has quite strong brows, so I went in with a dark pencil and I went much heavier than I usually do. And now I'm going in with this Essence Make Me Brow Brow Gel thingy with filling fibres apparently. I don't know, but I wanted strong brows, but not insta brows because I don't believe Hades would tit about quite that much. She said titting about putting fibre filling gel on her eyebrows, honestly. Right, uh, I'm going in with this flat top brush that I showed you earlier and I'm going to go into satin, which is that orangey shade, so I'm just going to connect it up and run it along right underneath the lashes there. I do love this palette. I really, really love this palette. I think until the more recent colourful releases, you know, the Riviera and the Alyssa Edwards, this was, I think, probably my favourite, even over the subculture. Um, I have got subculture, so if anybody wants to see that on a retro review let me know. I just think subculture was a bit ahead of its time really. More pressed pigments and people just didn't know how to, to use them at that point in time. Right, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, Swamp Queen. I love it because it's flat topped but it's chunky so it's great for getting up under the lashes. And I'm going to go back into that gorgeous yellow sphere, not sapphire. And I'm just going to use that to really buff out the lower lash line and soften that up nicely. Like so. So if you were going to turn a Disney villain into a Disney princess, who would you choose? And why? And how would you do their makeup? How would you represent their evil colours? As a lovely, beautiful, wonderful, soft and gentle and liltingly voiced princess. And all that jazz. No, I'm not going to sing again. I think I've sung at you enough for one day. <clears throat> right, let me grab a little, a little brush. Where's my little brush gone? Come here, little brush. There we go. This little brush, believe it or not, is a lip brush that I bought from eBay, I think, probably a decade ago now. Now, Hades is blue and grey, so I'm going in with the Jeffrey Platinum Ice Palette and I'm going into Glacier, or Glacier. 
and I'm going to tuck some, this is a, like a silvery blue. I'm just going to tuck this up under the brow. The problem with these ones is they do get hard perm. But if you scrub your brush in hard enough, you can pick up pigment as you can see. If the hard pan gets really bad, I just go into it with them. Um, got a clean spoolie here. I use this for my tart blush that's dried up. I use it for palettes that have got hard pan on them. Just scuff the surface up a little bit so you've got loose pigment on the top to pick up. I'll pop that into the inner corner. Line it down to meet the under eye colour that I've put on. Right. I'm pausing you one last time while I stick this highlight all over where else. Choose a lippy. Do something with my hair. And I will be back to you with a final look. I know you can't wait. And you won't have to because it's coming up now. Voila. As you can see, I went for a blue lippy. This is a BH Cosmetics Metallic Liquid Lip in shade Esmeralda. I always feel like I should say it like that if watching Quasimodo. And, you know, Hades has his blue flames, so as a woman's crowning glory is usually her hair, I thought a beautiful blue for a Disney princess. <sighs> it's a small underworld after all. Loose hair. <laughs> Hi, Susie. I'm home. So what do you think then? I'm just going to stick a little picture of Hades up here again. Which I think I forgot to do earlier. I, will, I probably would have put the picture up, but I probably forgot to mention that I put the picture up. It's late. You're going to have to forgive me. I'm very tired. But I'm also very sassy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just distracted by myself with this blue hair. And I'm really beginning to think I quite see blue hair actually. Ooh. Maybe Nicky Raven's got the right idea. Shave your head off and just wear a succession of wigs. Every day's a good hair day. <sighs> but then keeping them attached. Maybe not. Anyway, this is my what if they were good if Hades were a beautiful Disney princess. So, I really hope you enjoyed this. I have no idea how well this series is going to go down. It could be a complete and utter fell up. In which case, you'll probably see the first one and this one. And if it's a fell up, you probably won't see the next three. <laughs> ah, I like people like this. I'm enjoying it. It's a little bit of fun. And that's what makeup should be. It should be fun. Um, I use my Benefit Bag Gal Bang on my lashes because I haven't got to go anywhere so it doesn't matter if it smudges, which it always does. I don't know, I never get on with the expensive mascaras, they always seem to smudge or flake or leave like spider tracks everywhere. But, what do you reckon? Mm. What about if I nick? crown that I used for Ursula, for Hades, what do we think? Oh yeah, yeah I like that, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right, there's quite enough primping and preening, I've still got to record the intro, take some photographs, then take all this bloody lot off and do my skincare and go to bed. If you are a member of my 4F family, please double check you're still subscribed, even if I'm appearing in your feed, because a lot of people are getting unsubscribed. 
against their will. Thanks, YouTube. Once you've checked that, and of course you would have already have clicked the like button, wouldn't you? And left me a little comment and maybe even shared it if you enjoyed the video that much. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, thank you kindly. I'm a princess, you know. I'll set Zeus on you. No, 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 I won't, I promise. Princesses don't do stuff like that. I'm a good girl. Sometimes. Right, if you are new to my channel, hi, hello, welcome. I'm not always this mad, sometimes I'm worse. <clears throat> Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this film. If you've made it this far through, I'm guessing you must have liked just a little bit of it, even if it is just the wig and the crown at the end. Um, it would be awesome if you'd like to join the Full Ref family by hitting that subscribe button and turning it from red to grey. It is still free. Lord knows how long that's going to last. Uh, if you do hit subscribe, please do hit the notification bell and then jump through all those flaming hoops that YouTube have you click through to say that yes, not just liking the channel means I want to see their input, uh, or output rather, I, I actually want to have notifications as well. Tell me when they put a new video up, please. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it would be awesome if you'd like to join in. Uh, I've got a lot of other videos you can watch. Uh, some slightly more sane than this, some slightly more nutty than this. A bit of a smorgasbord, my channel. You never know what you're going to get. Yes, I'm aware that Forrest Gump did not say that about a smorgasbord, but I'm being cosmopolitan, darling. And I don't mean that trashy mag. Right. <laughs> That's quite enough for me for one day. So, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Zeus, put the kettle on, darling. Gasping for a cup of coffee, Avery. Cheers. Thank you.